Hi, my name is Ralph Nyberg. This is a quick tutorial on how to use the Zoomit utility in the uh, virtual classroom. Uh, why don't we go ahead and uh, get started here. All right, so Zoomit is a utility that's available for free download from uh, Microsoft. It's actually out on the Windows Sys internal site. And this is a utility that I use all of the time in the virtual classroom. It allows me to do a variety of different things, but one of the things it allows you to do is it allows you to highlight certain areas. It allows you to draw shapes over certain objects. But the first time I saw Zoomit being used was by an instructor named Rob Volkrod, and he did a wonderful job of implementing this as a tool to enhance his presentation. Uh, I've been using Zoomit ever since, and I use it all of the time for a variety of different things. The thing that I would recommend to you if you're going to plan on using Zoomit is that you familiarize yourself with the given tool and the way that you do that is after you have Zoomit installed you can come down here and you can take a look at the different options okay so these are the different options associated with the Zoomit utility you'll notice there's some different tabs now what I did is I did a screen grab of these different screen uh, these different options so that we can take a look in a little bit more detail so let me go ahead and cancel that and bring that up so the first thing here and again, to use Zoomit, basically what you do is you highlight the, you move your mouse to the area on the screen that you want to uh, enhance, and then, for example, I can press Control F1, or excuse me, Control 1, and that will bring up the area that I want. I can move it around, and once I click my mouse, it locks that into place. Now, I can also scroll my mouse to get more intense zoom or less intense zoom, but from here, I have the ability to then begin to interact with my screen. Now you'll notice on this screen that actually the zoom it toggle is set to none. That was because I had mistakenly erased that. Normally that would not be none. That would be a uh, control plus one for the toggle there. But this allows me to um, specify the magnification when I'm zooming in so I can get more or less. It also allows me, you know, to bind a particular hotkey to uh, to zoom it. Now, when I'm done, I can go ahead and press Escape, and then the next screen here, okay, let me go ahead and forward to the next one here is the live zoom. Okay, so live zoom can be very very useful. You know, when you're using live zoom, you're actually able to continue to interact with um, with the screen. So this is a very very nice feature. The default here for the live zoom is Control Four. Okay, and so let me kind of quickly demonstrate that. So if I come out here and I bring out my browser and then I highlight my spreadsheet, I move my mouse to my first name field there and then I hit control four, you'll see now I'm able to actually continue to interact. Mm -hmm. If I want to um, write on the screen and use zoom it, I can press control two here. Okay, which would allow me to, you know, create my shapes and things like that. I can press escape when I'm done. I'm still in this zoomed view. I can hold down control and I can up arrow or down arrow. I can move my mouse uh, as well, but I'm still interacting, you know, with the, uh, with the utility while I'm zoomed in, uh, which is a wonderful thing. When I'm done, I just press control four and that brings me back out. Okay. So live zoom, very effective feature. The Next utility here is draw. Now, if we look here at draw, this is what I would recommend. If you want to increase your your skill set with using Zoomit, when I started using Zoomit, the first thing I did is I made a cheat sheet. Okay, and on that cheat sheet, I had the different things that are outlined. You know, on this particular uh, slide, I had all my different colors. Okay, I had a little. If I want to draw a straight line, then I hold down Shift. If I want to draw a uh, you know, a circle, then I hold down tab. If I want to draw a square, I hold down uh, control. But each of these I just wrote on this cheat sheet. So I had this little piece of paper in front of me. Um, you can also, you know, get a whole whiteboard uh, if you need to. You can press control Z to erase the last thing you've done. You know, you can do an E, which will erase everything, but still keep you in the zoom it environment. Uh, or you press escape to get out of zoom it. But this is, you know, this is the information. The information that you see here, you know, this was really all the information that I wrote down on my cheat sheet in front of me so that as I was learning the utility, you know, I got better faster with it. And I wasn't intimidated. What are, what key is that? You know, I had it all written out 
uh, in front of me. Uh, the typing just allows me to set my uh, my font for text to enter in text. You know, I can select my color. Let's say I want blue text, and then I hit T. And if I scroll my wheel, then I get big text. And if I scroll my wheel down, then I get small text. Mm -hmm. But it is a uh, it's great. Uh, it's great for working with um, adding information to the screen. Mm -hmm generate my own slides on the fly using the drawing and the texting tool. And then the last thing here is the break. I don't use this all that frequently, but you can set a break timer and you can just say, all right, time for break, guys. Hit control three, and then it starts a countdown for uh, class. Now, some people use that heavily. I don't personally use it a lot, but it is a, uh, a nice tool that we have uh, available to us. So we also have the, uh, the break timer. So there are just numerous things that we can do with this. One of the things that you know that I like to do, I'm going to show you sort of one of the things that I have to do uh, as an instructor, as I as a system instructor, is I have to walk my students through getting signed up for the, you know, the Cisco Learning Network, and not just that, but also buying laps. And so what I'll do here is I'll take them out to the Cisco Learning Network. First thing that we have to confirm is I have to confirm whether they are they have an account or not. So if they have an account, I tell them to log in. If they do not have an account, then they have to register. Okay. So, and then from there, I make sure that after they're logged in, so I'll go ahead and log in here to the uh, Cisco Learning Network. And then the next thing I highlight is that they need to be able to go to our store. Okay. And so again, I'll come over here and I'll say you'll click on the link for our store. Okay. And then in the store, okay, when they get to the store, and sometimes it can take a little bit of time for you guys who teach Cisco <laughs> for the uh, store to catch up. The next thing I want to highlight them to is what they need to search for. And so I take them up here. And this is where I add in the text. You know, and so I'll say in the search window, I want you to type in ICNB1. Okay. Now I could also use live zoom here so I could zoom back out. And then I could, you know, if I wanted, I could actually do it. Uh, go into live zoom, hold down control, maybe bump it up one more time, and then I'll click in there and I'll type in ICND1. Yeah. Go ahead and search the store on ICND1. Get out of my uh, live zoom here, and then we have to scroll down. They're looking for a very specific thing. You know, they're looking for the Cisco Learning Labs for ICND1 students. So I kind of highlight here and then I tell them what you're looking for is you're looking for this nice young lady. Now I can I can hold down control and I can get thicker pointers if I really want to so I could you know I could make that a heavier circle if I so choose but you know that really enforces all right that's what they're looking for you know they're gonna remember that. I'll even screenshot that but that's a lesson for a uh, different time. Mm -hmm. And then I'll say after that you know you need to add to cart Click on Add to Cart, and then from there, after I've added to my cart, product gets added to shopping cart. Then I go ahead and highlight here, and then I zoom in again, and I'll say from there you need to check out. <laughs> and again, but you're just reinforcing the different areas on the screen as you go. When I click on checkout, the last thing I need to tell them about is I need to tell them about applying the coupon code that I'm about to send them. Okay, and so on the checkout screen for the Cisco Learning Network, what you'll see here is there is this apply coupon option. Okay, so I'm going to go back to text, and then I might say you know put your put your code here, and then click on the apply coupon button, and then follow the directions from there. So there's an example of like walking students through a process and you know being able to highlight different areas and using the Zoomit utility. You know, I, I make slides dynamically on the fly with Zoomit. Uh, here's an example of a uh, of a slide that I created with Zoomit. One of the things that you can do with Zoomit is once I'm in Zoomit mode, if I hit K, then I get this black background that I can work off of. And I could, if I hit, if I do the same thing, but I press W, then I get a white screen and I could enter in my text or whatever it happens to be. But I'll build you know slides you know on the fly using you know the Zoomit utility. There's just so many different things that we can do uh, with Zoomit uh, and you know whether it's 
you know, highlighting a certain area and using live zoom so that I can, you know, continue to interact with that. Oh. Or just zooming into a particular area and marking uh, parts of the screen. There are just numerous applications here for uh, the Zuma utility. Again, some instructors really like to use the timer for when they go on breaks. Um, so if you're not using Zoomit currently in the classroom, or if you're only partially using Zoomit uh, in the classroom, then I do highly recommend that you uh, you spend some time you know with the utility and really use it to its full potential. Uh, as I said before, the first time I saw Zoomit used effectively in the classroom was a presentation being done by one of my fellow instructors, Rob Folkrod, and I was like, I mean, I just fell in love with the tool right there. So. Um, I hope this helps to give you a starting point. Remember, the best way to get good at something is to actually do it and use it. And one of the most effective ways to help you as you start using the Zoomit utility is to create that cheat sheet. Like I said, I just pulled up those help screens and I just wrote all the codes on a piece of paper and I had it sitting in front of me at my instructor podium uh, and that really made it easy to, oh yeah, that's what I need to do. Uh, but you know, it's something that you know I use all day long, every day, anytime I'm sharing out my desktop. You know, I'm using Zoomit to uh, enhance my presentations. Uh, hopefully, this helps uh, get you guys started or give you some uh, additional tips if you're already using Zoomit in the classroom. Uh, thanks for listening.